Somewhere in the fields, a brave ecologist is studying wild rabbits. He plans to record the weights of every single rabbit. If he follows this plan, he will notice that most of the rabbits are close to the average and that there are some rabbits, but not many, that are much larger or much smaller than the average. The further from the average you get, the fewer animals there are. This particular bell-shaped curve is called a normal distribution. Sadly, he has to give up his experiment for it will cost him a fortune in carrots to complete it. So, he changes the plan. Instead of measuring every rabbit in the whole group, he decides to measure rabbits in small groups, chosen at random from the whole group. He knows that each small group won't necessarily be perfectly representative of the whole group. So he measures many small groups and then compares the averages of each. He starts by weighing five rabbits at a time and he finds that the distribution of the average is somewhat bell-shaped. Then he increases the sample size by weighing 20 rabbits at a time and then 100 rabbits at a time. Surprisingly, as the sample size increases, the spread decreases. The distributions of average weights becomes more and more normal. What our brave ecologist has just demonstrated is the central limit theorem. The averages of samples have approximately normal distributions. If the sample size increases, this distribution of averages becomes more normal and narrower. What if the population distribution is not normal to begin with? For example, the distribution of dragon wingspan is known to be bimodal. If an even braver ecologist were to study wild dragons, and measure dragon wingspans, the distribution of the average wingspan would still be approximately normal. And again, the more dragons our brave ecologist could measure at a time, the closer the distribution of their average wingspans will be to a truly normal distribution. The distribution will also be narrower. So now we know that regardless of a true distribution, the central limit theorem shows that the average of values drawn from the distribution will always be approximately normal. Furthermore, the bigger the sample size, the narrower the distribution of average becomes, and the closer the mean of the sample gets to the true mean of the population. This is why sample size matters so much in any statistical analysis, whether it is a political poll or evaluation of a medical procedure. There is something very special about the normal distribution. Not only do many things we measure in biology follow a normal distribution, but it also crops up when we look at estimates of variables even when the variables themselves don't have a normal distribution. As we saw with dragon wings. Because of this, we can use the normal distribution to test ideas about the world even when the underlying variables don't follow a normal distribution. My name is Bhutikrit Patacharya. This video was created by Shui Cho and brought to you by CreatureCast. Special thanks to Casey Dunn. For more stories, visit CreatureCast.org.